That's how you know. Okay. Mr. Secor, whenever you are ready. All right, I am ready. You, you, you are good to go. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, welcome to the Situate Diversity, Equity and Inclusion uh, Committee meeting. Uh, it is Tuesday, August 17th, 2021 at 630. Uh, I would like to call the meeting to order. Can I get a second? I second. second. Okay, thank you. And uh, we will take the roll. Uh, Ms. Gray. Yes. Vice Chair Dre, sorry. Uh, Ms. Yassine. Yes. Uh, Kate Swope. Yes. Uh, Cel Celia Risha. Yes. Uh, Jim Six Tiger. Yes. Okay. Uh, and absent, we have uh, Natasha Stewart. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm just going to read Governor Baker's declaration uh, of a public health emergency and the, re the related emergency executive order uh, dated March 12th, 2020, uh, 2020, has been extended until April 22nd, 2022. Uh, this meeting will be recorded by Situate Community Television and can be viewed live on Situate Community Community Television Facebook Live. The recorded meeting will also be available uh, available tomorrow on Comcast Channel 9 and YouTube Situate Community Television. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go through some of our safe space and norms. <clears throat> uh, this is a safe space for people of color and for all underrepresented people in communities. Any comments that are inappropriate or have an animus <clears throat> and racism or bias will not be allowed. Uh, we will turn off the sound if any comments are offensive to the meeting. This is a safe space where people can bring up challenges and questions without fear of repercussion or hostility. Uh, please take the learning, but leave the story so that people feel comfortable sharing their experiences. Uh, please also assume best intentions. All participants are embarking on this journey at different starting points. Uh, listen and be kind. Please use respectful language and please ask if you are unsure. Uh, lastly, administrators may remove anyone with inappropriate content or acting inappropriately. Thank you. All right, let's launch into it. Um, we have a fairly kind of short agenda, I think. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, first up, and we're already ahead of schedule, uh, update on committee membership. Um, Maura, not to blindside you, I'm not sure if you have any updates uh, as to applicants or anything of that nature. Maybe hey, not blindside, I mean, no worries. Um, I can. Uh -huh. I can um, tell you that we have started to interview um, new applicants for all of our committees, Tom. They started last Tuesday and we had one gentleman come in that had requested to be on the DEI, um, but we did not make any decisions because there are other applicants in the queue. So I do not have all their names at this time. Um, I can ask Lorraine for them, but um, you, she puts together a very comprehensive book during this time. so. Um, I should have a better idea on Tuesday when we get a more comprehensive list of who's come forth, but that's where we're at with it right now. Okay. We Any want to make sure questions? we, we, yeah, we want to make sure we, we interview all interested parties before we appoint someone. Right. Okay. Any other questions from anyone on that? Okay. We still have the, the one open spot. All right, all right. Uh, acceptance of minutes. So we have uh, two meetings worth of, of minutes, right, Ruth? Uh, so just I'll team up one at a time. So uh, June 29th, to the extent that people had an opportunity to review uh, any questions. Uh, 
I do not. Okay. Uh, can I move to accept the minutes from the June 29th, 2021 committee meeting? Can I have a second? Am I doing a second. That? Okay, thanks, Kate. All right, so let's go to the roll. Uh, Vice Chair Dre. Yes. Ms. Yusin. Yes. Uh, Ms. Dwope. Yes. Uh, Ms. Risha. Yes. And Mr. Six Tiger. Yes. And I am also a yes. And again, absent is uh, Reverend Stewart. Okay. All right. Uh, the July 13th minute, um, which was chaired by Ms. Dre. And I did watch the video. It was a great meeting. Um, we don't watch the video, Tom. <laughs> what's that? So we don't watch the video. I don't like watching myself on video. I, I can say I have never watched a video. I don't either. I don't like the sound of my <laughs> own voice, but sometimes I have to go back and suffer through it, especially if I want to embarrass my kids. I turn it up <laughs> so. And I note that I have already received some comments uh, for, to amend these minutes. So first of all, um, very embarrassingly, I had Angela Dre's middle name, Ribeiro, misspelled. So that has to be amended. Um, also, there's information about Mr. Montero's video that I have now updated. And most glaringly, um, I have the date wrong on the top of the page. And that's what I really thought you guys were gonna call me out on, but, um, so that has to be amended. Are there any other amendments for the July 7th meeting? I mean, I had a number of notes that I took, but they were mostly just kind of notes to self that I also, that I already discussed with uh, Angela and Ruth in a meeting a few weeks ago. So I don't have any other comments. I move to accept the July 13th meeting uh, minutes as amended. I'll second that. All right, let's move that to a roll. Uh, Vice Chair Dre. Yes. Ms. Yusin. Yes. Uh, Ms. Swope. Yes. Ms. Risha. Yes. Mr. Fitztiger. Yes. And I am a yes, and the Reverend Stewart is absent. Okay, great. All right, it is, it's now time for public comment. Um, I don't, see any hands. Okay. If someone does elect to attend, we can obviously, we, we should be able to move this around a bit. Um, all right, uh, liaison report. Um, back to you, I guess, Maura. I mean, you mentioned that I know you guys are uh, interviewing across a number of different uh, committees and so forth. What is the, aside from that, what is the well, I, We did a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of licensing and entertainment um, approvals last week, but I would say the two most notable pieces just to share um, with the group are two things. Um, tomorrow, um, there is a water resources update. It's in the middle of the day, it's at noon, and it's a seminar in which you can register to listen about you know, the state of our treatment plant, water conservation. There are a lot of different speakers there. So I would go on the town website if, if anybody's interested in taking part in that. Um, it's run by the Water Commission. Um, so um, not sure why they chose noon time to do that, but maybe they were thinking folks at lunchtime could join. Um, so that's one thing. But the other thing also is the Coast Guard station um, down behind the Harbor Master's office has been identified by the Coast Guard to be closed and have the personnel there um, consolidated to the Point Allerton facility up in Hull. 
um, Situate is the only uh, the only stop between Point Allerton and south of the canal. So um, we, as a board, as well as the Harbor Master, as well as the Waterways Commission, as well as I would hope anybody who is a boater is very concerned about that. So there is a link also on our town website for folks to uh, go and click on to and express um, your opinion or, or um, hopefully your dissatisfaction with that. And hopefully they, it is open for public comment on the federal register. That's where the public comment is held. So um, we're hoping to reverse <laughs> that decision so we can keep it back. So I think it's really important to keep our boaters and our marine community um, safe because um, we've got some pretty treacherous waters at times out there. So I would say those are really just the two big things that we talked about, pretty pretty uh, uh, standard rope meeting as far as just approving different licenses for the new driftway market, which will be down um, next to Dunkin' Donuts. So if you've seen that construction going on down there, um, that is a uh, market that will also have um, gas, um, a sandwich shop, as well as a convenience store that we approved a um, wine and um, um, wine and beer license for. So in that in that segment, so that you should start seeing construction there pretty soon. But that was pretty much it. Not not too much other news that would really be earth shattering for any of you. <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of license approvals. You don't you don't have anything to do at all with. Uh, with the school board, correct? No. So, well, two-part question. So, no, but when a school board member resigns, like Mike, Mike Hayes resigned two, right. two or three weeks ago, um, the process is for the select board to appoint a temporary member until the annual election will be held in May. So we will, um, we are accepting applications for that seat and we will start interviewing folks for that school board um, starting, I wanna say September 8th and 9th. And it's gonna be, um, it will be up to the select board to appoint that person uh, for the period of, you know, whatever they're selected, if it's mid-September or whatnot um, till the election in May, and it'll be up to that person whether or not they want to run for re-election or other folks to come forward as well. Um, but typically, any of the other decisions that are taking place, uh, the school board does not roll up to the board of selectmen. And Sorry. the the school board meeting, well, the the interview process that's a public meeting being held at the senior center at like six thirty on September eighth, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I'm sure it'll be streamed and live and whatever Seth does over there at the Senior Center. I'm not sure what his capabilities are. Seth, what are your capabilities at the Senior Center? Will it, it be streamed it, it, live? It will be live. It will be recorded. Yes. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I I I haven't seen um the application process is open till 820. So I have not seen uh, any applications yet. Maura, and this goes back to what we were saying towards the end of our last meeting, I think. Um, I don't know how the questions for the interview process are formulated for the select board to ask the candidates. I would say just given the recent um, influx of candidates across the country and the state for school boards that have certain beliefs that are very anti-equity and teaching history, et cetera, if that would just be put into consideration when reviewing the candidates, their resumes and history, because I absolutely, think whoever, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. And uh, you know, that's a great question, um, Celia. So I have not seen the list of questions that we have. I don't know if it's an open format, but I certainly will ask that question. Um, I'm sure some of my other colleagues will, but I'll, I'll double check with our chair and see how they're handling the questioning piece of it. I um, mean, I'll share that with you once, you know, once we have it so we can um, see exactly how it's going to be formatted. So I'm not clear on whether or not they're going to be designated questions. You know, I know when we interviewed for the town administrator a couple of years ago, we we came up with a very structured set of questions to share across the board so we could be consistent from applicant to applicant as well as identify those different key areas. To your point, whether it's diversity, you know, whether it's COVID, right? a lot of whether it's negotiations, all those different very important aspects of being a school board representative.
but I will double check for you. That's a great question. Yeah, thank you. I'm also more, can I clarify, is this a joint meeting with the school committee? Because I was understanding that the school committee and the select board did this together. Um, it's a joint meeting, I believe, for questioning, but I believe it's only up to the select board to choose. Okay. That's my understanding, Ruth. Okay. Okay. Uh, if there's no other, no other questions for Maura, um, Ruth, I know Stride takes, uh, they're taking much of the summer off. I'm not sure if you have any updates from Stride. Well, again, it's situatestride.org for their website and or Situate Stride on Facebook. Um, they will be reconvening in September and they are planning their meetings. Um, there's a lot of very topical issues that they're discussing as far as meeting plans. So I'd say stay tuned um, because though they have been regularly updating information on Facebook page, um, kind of keeping people informed in a, a summer reading list, um, they will be more active in meetings come September. All right, so Jamil is not here. Um, he is on vacation, I believe, with his family. Um, hopefully he's having a wonderful time. Uh, any other reports, anything you wanna report on, Bob, or anything else you wanna to touch on in this section? Um, no, Tom, no, nothing else that I had to add. Okay, I think, and, Ruth, I think you and I may have emailed about this. So, and you you can all you can all correct me. Um, so, Mike Hayes, I'm I'm back to the school board. So, Mike Hayes had started to attend our meetings. Now, was that in a quasi official capacity as a school board liaison? And if the answer is yes, yes. Okay. So maybe once the dust settles uh, with the new appointee, um, we go back to that and start with, we would go to Mike Long for that, or how do we go about that? Is that? Either Mike Long or um, Superintendent Burkhead. I think um, it's probably why we ended up with two last time because we it came from both two different folks. So um, either. You know, Mike's the chair this year, so it would make sense that he threw it out there to his board to see who would like to participate and be the liaison. Okay. That's how, that's how I would attack that. Do you want me to reach out to him, Tom? Or do you want to wait until the, the appointing process is completed? I say why wait. I mean, if you could reach out to him, that would be great. Sure. I think it'd be, it might be asking a lot for someone to jump in brand new and then, oh, by the way. Um, yeah, that's a good point. So I will do that. All right. All right, well, <clears throat> we are well ahead of schedule. Um, let's get some updates from our, uh, from our three working groups. Um, I'm not sure that we're gonna have a lot here. Um, Pacific Police Department. Ruth, do you want to just give an update? I know we had to push our meeting. Um, that was my fault. Um, it was it pretty was much day. it. I, I, we, we've had to push our meeting um, a little bit further out, so we still have our questions. Um, and, and I know I would also like to add one of the added questions as far as um, when we do talk to the police chief is to ask him his views on the freedom team that we've heard so much about with Jamil. Um, I'd like to hear that, but we will be meeting with him coming up soon, but it, it, again, this is a, a later than we certainly expected, but we would like all of our group to be able to be there. That's all I've got, Tom. Anything else you wanna add? Uh, nothing else on the on the police, um, the public safety meeting, or I should say it's, it's actually it's, it's, uh, specific to um, the police department. Um, DPW, uh, any updates there? Oh, you, well, you guys have met since our last, right? Are right. you doing me to take that, Celia? You don't want to run with that? Oh, sure. Um, please chime in because I don't have the best summary top of mind. But yes, we did meet with Kevin Cafferty and 
one of his um, head engineers, uh, the end of July, Bob Ruth and I. So we touch on a few topics. We'll, um, we're working on the notes and we'll share them out with everyone. Um, one was, you know, employee town uh, relationships and training. Um, you know, one thing that came up, I'm sorry if I'm going out of, no, I'm going out of order. Um, we just talked about how active DPW employees are throughout the town. They're very visible. Um, and what training they have in terms of interacting with um, town just um, residents. Um, and Kevin did share that there actually is training. There's, you know, now even a way to identify DPW employees um, as community members, just, you know, in terms of both training and uniforms, not uniforms, but a shirt so that residents know who they are if they come to their door to um, talk about a service request or something happening in their neighborhood. Um, we talked a lot about um, pedestrian improvements. I think one of the things in terms of service that we wanted to make sure of was that all parts of town were being treated equitably in terms of timeline and service and the whole process. And it was great to find out for someone who doesn't know, for example, that the department does keep a very sort of like structured um, and organized process for all work orders or issues that and has a ranking system in terms of roads and projects and things that need updating. Um, and that ranking system is you know numerical and that's how basically things get solved. So I think that was good to share. Um, and I think something that should be more widely known because I think there's often um, assumptions made, especially if somebody thinks, you know, their, their street is worse off than someone else and uh, vice versa. So that's something we just talked about. I think one thing that we were wrapping up the meeting with too, in terms of um, services was just paving. I think what struck me was Kevin's focus on accessibility the past five years, you know, so we did talk about how Paving can sometimes take um, a back seat to sidewalk installment, um, which is you know more expensive. But we have done that as a town to prioritize accessibility. So I thought that was key. You know, as we talk about DEI, like why we did that, and I think explaining that to residents is really important. And we can see it around town, but framing it as an accessibility and equity issue is, um, I think, what could set us apart. Um, I think the other big piece was hiring, retention, and advancement. I think everybody, I mean, everyone's reading about the great resignation, right? Everybody's trying to hire right now. Um, obviously the town is as well, and DPW is down a number of folks, um, and that's hitting them hard. I think, you know, some things to talk about, you know, overcoming, we all know like Situate's location, the pay, how comparable it is to um, other uh, areas in town, but I think what struck me as being unique to DPW over our other town departments is that some of these are middle skill jobs um, that create a great deal of opportunity for upward mobility so that we, if we were to focus our recommendations on hiring or staffing or funding for a specific department, we haven't gotten there or debriefed as a group yet. But that struck me as an opportunity just because of the type of jobs that they are um, and reaching out to Votech um, institutions, et cetera. I think there's room there for serious growth. Um, I think some of the challenges there obviously are making people feel valued in these positions too. And what do the facilities look like? How are we investing in a town in these jobs in DPW facilities, whether it's the one on Captain Pierce or elsewhere. Um, so people want to work there, not just for the town of Situate. Um, and obviously there's an, there are issues with recruitment of diverse populations, whether it be women, people of color, people with uh, physical disabilities. Um, and Kevin did share, you know, for example, some of the facilities are not fully accessible yet, which he would love them to be, but that there's a challenge in funding that. So just that's the summary there. Um, we also talked about procurement. Um, Obviously, Situate follows state guidelines um, and is required to take the lowest qualified bid, but we talked a little bit about outreach to make sure that um, women and minority-owned enterprises or WMBEs 
um, at least are have outreach so that they know about upcoming opportunities as either prime contractors or subs, which are also known as tier two opportunities. Um, so this, so we talked also about how the state has revamped their supplier diversity office before this year, it wasn't all that robust and Kevin and team hadn't worked with them, but he did mention they actually saw supplier diversity training come out from that office soon um, that he will look into. I think for me, the takeaway there is, well, A, right now we're in a unique market where um, some contractors just you know have plenty of work and are not getting back to folks um, mentioned a situation in which there was outreach done to, I think, 12 companies, right, Bob and Ruth, mm -hmm. and only one submitted a bid. Um, and so we went with that bid. I think um, the issue there and where we could push back as a committee is like, okay, great, reach out to more and make sure you're reaching out to more diverse suppliers, but they need staff for that. And truthfully, if it's just Kevin and his chief engineer, there's no time to do that. And we know supplier diversity takes a lot of time and effort to do that outreach and um, support. And so it's like a staffing thing, I think, on one end, um, not just about the lowest qualified bid and working with the state more closely around those issues. Um, Bob and Ruth, what am I forgetting? I think I tried to summarize. I think you did awesome, Sue. <laughs> okay. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I feel like I was there. Okay, good. <laughs> it was a long meeting. <laughs> May I ask a question, Tom? Yes. Um, so Celia and, and Ruth and Bob, is the next step for you getting this feedback is, are you then gonna come back and make some recommendations of different thoughts and things that we can take a look at? Okay. Um, I wanna just clarify that first, we are circulating the notes among ourselves to make sure that we are happy with the notes, um, Bob, Celia and myself. After that, they will go to Kevin and Sean so that they can also be comfortable that those are accurate notes that they feel that that's what was discussed uh, because I don't want to misquote or misrepresent anything that was said in the meeting. And then, yes, I think we're gonna have to go back and that's, I think a discussion we need to have for all of our groups. Mm -hmm. um, we have some things we talked about in the meeting, but we're gonna also have to take that further um, for what recommendations are we going to make to the select board, well, and first of all, to our committee to discuss in case that they have any more, but that whole next piece needs to happen. Yeah, I find that that's great. I find the procurement piece interesting because I've engaged with the state procurement department for years and they've always had a diversity piece of it, but they never really promoted it very well. So I'd be curious to see <clears throat> the type of training and the shift in what they're doing, because the, obviously that's where the town goes, right, is to really leverage a lot of those state contracts to get better volume pricing. So yeah, I'd like to, okay, I'd love to know what they're doing. And then I think I also then need clarity because, it, so because of my day job, I am very familiar with a number of specifically MBEs. But I don't know because of my role as a volunteer on the committee, am I then allowed to say, oh, you couldn't find somebody for paving? Here's a list of five MBEs. You can reach out to them. Is that a violation of some sort if I were to? Um, I don't, not if you're not benefiting yeah. from that recommendation. I wouldn't think so. Okay. Bob, would you agree with that? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I, think, I don't yeah. think there's any issue with that. Okay. A lot of times, though, you, they do have to be certified by the state. So mm -hmm. if they are, then that probably wouldn't be an issue. But that would be obviously something to be considered as well. OK. Thank yeah. You. That'd be great. Share those resources. Oh, yes, there's plenty. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. I'll wrap us up then. That's great. Thank you. Um, and that will segue into when we talk about the project plan and opportunities in a few minutes to your question more, because, you know, coming out of some of these meetings, I mean, ultimately, you know, best case scenario is that it evolves into some opportunities that become in-flight projects that then become recommendations. That should be really the, the progression. And we'll talk okay. about that. Um, I don't have much of an update from uh, our other group uh, that was 
you know, Board of Health and Facts and Social Services. We met with them a while ago now. Uh, that was, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Kate, Natasha, Bob, and myself. Uh, we do need to get back with that group. So that will be something that uh, I'll, I'll get an email circulated and maybe we can have a, a quick meeting next week and figure out what our next steps are. Okay. okay. All right, uh, moving right along. Um, good update. All right, let me let me share this. Bear with me one second. Let's see if I even have it open, which I don't. I'll bring up the Excel version and then we'll uh, go from there. Hold on, let me try that one more time. Okay. All right, how are we doing from a size standpoint? Is that, is that big enough? People see it? Can you go a little bit bigger, please? I can do that. That's really How's that? Good for me, and I'm I'm half blind. <laughs> looks good. That's great. That looks good. Pre-COVID, I never wore glasses, so let's just leave it at that. Um, no, isn't that the truth? Oh my goodness. All right, uh, so I, I sent this out to everybody. Um, I may or may not have done a, a small preview six weeks ago or whenever I was on, I was on our last meeting. Um, and so I've, I've moved a lot of stuff around. And look, no pride in authorship, I always like to say. So if there's columns that you think should be added, deleted, what have you, it's still very much a work in progress. Um, what I talked about just a few minutes ago, uh, you know, we've got the tabs at the bottom. Okay. So and it's really the kind of the first four that where I, I put things. We don't have anything in recommendations yet. So it's really opportunities, in flight projects. Let me just make these all the same size. Uh, and archived or closed projects. All right. And I didn't do this. I'll uh, I'll uh, partner with uh, with Ruth and Angela on this. The three of us um, did have a meeting and, and kind of went through uh, the list. Uh, I actually let me just check one thing. Okay, good. Because I think in the last meeting, um, gender neutral bathrooms were highlighted in yellow and you guys kept missing it. And when I was watching the video, I, I, I kept talking and I realized I wasn't actually in the meeting. Um, <laughs> window into my brain. All right, so here we are. Um, so right now, things that are in here under opportunities are really for discussion. Um, in-flight projects, you know, kind of our working definition right now. These are these are things that people are are working on. Um, it's at least something that uh, we feel we have some tangible next steps, or should have tangible next steps. Um, so, please interrupt uh, as I as I go through this. Um, now, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, if we need a quorum to move something from one tab to another or what have you, but it'll be a work in progress. And I'd like to carve out uh, some time in really every meeting going forward to, to discuss this type of stuff. Um, and some of the stuff I really just, I'm not sure where they stand and if we should just move them or park them somewhere. Um, archived and closed, they're not necessarily the same thing. We put something into an archive and bring it back to life. And I've, 
I put some numbers in here, which the numbers will stay so that at least we can, if we're looking at a big spreadsheet, we can say we're looking at project number seven or something. So should we, Tom, should we add in um, like a status column so we can provide updates or go in there and everyone can see how the different, oh, yeah. is there one way over? Oh, okay, sorry, got it. Yeah, and so it's over here and got it. you know I can date it uh, what have you, if, um, if people want to, it's also on Slack and it's in a PDF and a Excel. And right now I'm just dating, I'm putting a date in the title of the document for lack of a better way to do it. Um, and I can also put, you know, dates in here, right? So I could just pop in eight seventeen, what have you. Um, and I should have cleaned this up. So these were the notes from the a meeting that I had with Ruth and Angela, and these were notes that were already in here. Okay, but certainly, and if you guys want to, you know, opine on different things, if you want to send me emails um, because you're working on something or you you want to discuss something, just please, everyone has my contact details. Well, um, can I opine on one on in opportunities, uh, yeah. Tom? Um, yeah. I, I it's kind of a project number. Uh, six. Yeah. In in my mind, that is what we're doing with our small work groups, with the town departments. So to me, that should be also in flight. It you may or may not want to change the wording of it, but you know what are we doing with this? We're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion with down town personnel policies and programming. So I would say that that was ongoing, and then we. That actually breaks out into three different work groups with the people involved. I'm good with that. And then I wanted to ask Bob, um, Bob, we had worked together with uh, the policy procedure manuals for the town of Situate. Um, at that time, we did not go forward with specific recommendations from uh, this committee, um, but we could do so in the past, in the future, if we chose to do so. Is that something you want to continue with? You know, I, I think so. I'm, you know, the, the, the process of getting a um, policy developed and approved is it's a bit cumbersome. So, um, you know, anything that's sort of really sort of specific to the, our DEI efforts, I, I absolutely would, would look for any input from the committee. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be 10 different um, uh, policies that we're looking to develop, but there, there, there could be one or two additional ones. We did finalize the anti-discrimination policy, which the town ha hadn't had that policy. So that, that's good. It's, it's still in kind of approval process at this point. I have to talk to the unions about it and, and the town administrator. But I do think that there's some other policies that, that we may want to um, consider rolling out. Um, we talked about those previously. It could be, you know, um, uh, you know, bullying policy or something like that, that, that may be relevant to the work that we're doing here. So, um, so uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think, I think that there's an advantage to, you know, to, to bringing some of those forth before this committee. I'm not going to make a bunch of changes every time we discuss this, but I agree, Ruth. So I made the executive decision to just move that. So, and I'll 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 carve it out. I'll have um, yeah. Uh, I'll have a separate one for the three different working groups that we have right now. So I'll take care of that. All right. Um, some some of the other opportunities, and I know this was discussed eons ago at this point. Well, five months ago, I guess. Um, a diversity cultural center. And we don't have to go deep on these tonight, but um, it was discussed. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has any thoughts on this right now. Do we want to maybe agree on like prioritization, low, medium, high? Yeah. In that column? I don't know. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, here's our priority ranking right here. So. Mm -hmm. 
what's the, I know when this was discussed initially, um, I think that's when there was like a survey going on with the old Pier 44 building. What what was the outcome of that? Is the is that still going to be the community center? I mean, because I think one of the things I mean, this is a nice to have, but how would we propose something like this to the board without actually having a facility or, you know, cost to create a facility? Yeah, so where that the Pier 44 is, is um, there is a joint committee that's being put together that Andrew um, Goodrich is heading up. Um, we've done a survey and really uh, we've surveyed the community and the consensus is that, that that it is some sort of a recreational visitor community kind of center. So we're bringing together some folks from different aspects of other town committees. So whether it's conservation, recreation, select board, um, and asking members from different aspects of town to come in and sit together waterways and come up with next steps to propose solutions for that property. Um, so once we get those together, Angela, you know, certainly if there's, there, there wasn't like a, we've, we've surveyed the town and there wasn't a strong a uh, request for it to be a cultural center. So I'm not sure Pier 44 would be that location. So um, certainly something we can look at, but I think the idea obviously I think needs a little bit more defining, you know, what it's a very broad term in my mind. I don't know what right. you all think. Yeah. But also I think we need the, uh, the, the people that are, are time-wise to take this on and to run with it, to do that definition space and piece. And some things are, are awesome ideas, but do we have the time and kind of bandwidth to run with it? Um, and I think that that's gonna kind of determine a lot of times people's priorities is what people are willing to work on. And if we don't have somebody who's willing to step up and do this now, I, I don't think we can do it now. Yeah, and I'm also thinking, you know, right, if we kind of go back to, let's just, that this is something I think that was proposed prior to when we kind of said, look, let's just stay in our lane right now and get accomplished what we were initially tasked to do, which is to look at our policies and procedures. So maybe that's something that's secondary, right? After we complete this very comprehensive task that we all already have on our plates. Yeah, I would agree. Um, let's, let's keep going. Um, and yeah, we shouldn't spend too, too much time on this because we should probably talk about some of the in-flight projects. Um, so an equity task force, this, I mean, this is really the freedom team. So these types of things, I'll probably try to reach out to uh, Jamil offline. And I don't know if we just put them in, in archived or closed. I, I wanna be able to to certainly help him and assist him, but this is a separate thing. Is everybody good with that? And, and I think that as Jamil develops it, again, I am interested in what he's doing and how it's gonna go. And I would like to know what it's going to look like. Um, we may be asked at some point in time to recommend this to the select board. So being a, kind of in the know with the process, I think, would be very valuable to us because we'd also have to say why we would choose this rather than some other format to support people in need. So I think that this may come a time where people say, yeah, I want to kind of help develop what our position on this would be because I think it would be valuable. Just again, this is not something that is under the select board. The select board does not, from my understanding of what Jamil has said, the select board does not, um, it's not a government body, um, but I think the select board could possibly make a statement in support of it. Um, it would be more of that kind of a uh, uh, position uh, on it because they are not going to be overseeing it, but we might want to do that at some point in time. Right. Okay. Uh, the next couple, um, recreation schools, this is pretty, general um encourage activities 
Yeah, I, I agree, Tom, this is very general. And some of it um, is being, I think, um, addressed with, um, you know, with Jamil, you know, the DI director, the school aspect. Um, yeah, he's doing a ton of stuff. Yeah. Um, but the good thing is that there, you know, from the activities that we've had this summer in town, um, I think it's wonderful that we see that there's support um, in the community for, you know, um, education and promote, promoting things. The library did a wonderful job with the um, Cape Verdean for um, the month of July. Um, the business community in the harbor, you know, um, funding the band that performed. So I think it's great that we put this out there because I think it's, you know, a, a goal of the committee, you know, um, to promote um, diversity and community engagement. Um, but I think it's too much to have and as just one project. Um, I think it's gonna be split up and probably put into, um, you know, different categories um, or um, kind of you scroll back down to the title when you're, when you're done, I'm just trying to, yeah, I mean, Situate, um, Situate Rec. Um, I, I think they just help um, individuals they want to provide you know, whether it's a lesson or something like that, but this, and I think it's wonderful if we had someone that's willing to, um, you know, offer something through the sick, situate recreation, um, whether it's, you know, an, uh, teaching a foreign language or playing, you know, an instrument. Um, Which group I, has situate recreation? Is that part of the uh, senior center and, and health um, department group? No, no, no. Yeah, so I, I wonder as well as whether or not a lot of those issues may be addressed when we meet with those department heads. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we just did police, social services, and and, and DPW, and and I, I I know I'm not sure that we're going to be able to get to every single department head, but um, maybe we make some decisions on 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 who we speak to next. But um, ultimately, I think you know, in conversations with the you know council on aging and the library and the rec department, we may be be able to sort of you know, flush this out a little bit more and, and maybe even make some recommendations to them, hear, hear what they're doing currently and then make some additional recommendations to um, uh, what activities they can engage in to sort of expand upon this. But um, like Angela was saying, I think like the, the library in, in particular does some great work in this regard. And, and so um, I, I'd love to hear more about what, what they're doing and, and what else, they, whatever other ideas they may have. But um, I'm wondering if we just deal with that in the department head um, process. I think so. I, I'd be surprised if uh, Situate Rec and the library aren't, you know, at the very top of the next list of priorities as far as the departments are concerned. So. I would agree with that. And, you know, whoever ends up in those groups too, I think if in those conversations, like for example, funding emerges as an issue, like that came up with Rep. Mespino, or when we asked about the um, budget, the state budget that just passed, saying that there would be, she could share um, a number of opportunities for funding for cultural rec arts type of activities, and that's how we could leverage it for DEI. And so just making sure that that's woven in there, because I do not, I don't want us to let go of the cultural piece because it keeps coming up about situate and the reputation and like who belongs mm -hmm. here. And so I would definitely prioritize that next set for the meetings. Thank you. Uh, the next one, uh, the Greenbush residents. Um, this is quite specific. I'm not sure what to do about this. Yeah. You know, that's a, as Sue was explaining that, that actually that exact issue came up in our conversation with DPW. And, um, and it was actually encouraging to hear about the process that they go through when they, they determine how they provide services in different areas of town. Um, as Celia was explaining, it was very sort of objective, sort of numbers driven, data driven. Um, you know, we, we did make some suggestions or we will probably be making some suggestions to the DPW on how they sort of can kind of elaborate on that and, and further sort of develop that objective process just to make sure that that 
we're not like forgetting sex, sections of town, but also um, we, we had conversations with them about how they can better communicate about their decision-making process. Because I think sometimes there's individuals who feel like, you know, as Sarah you were saying, is that, you know, that they feel like they're kind of left behind when in, in reality, there's an objective reason for, for, for how they determine what are the priorities for services. So um, I do think that some of that work has already happened in the, in the conversations we had with DPW. And I think we'll be making some more recommendations to them, but I, I think there's, we can sort of build off of the conversations we already had with them, I think. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Um, research and develop a proposal for a sister city project in Cape Verde. Um, Tom, I believe we have this listed on the in-flight projects as well. I think we've got it twice on the worksheet. That's possible. You do. How about that? Okay. It's already in flight. It's already in flight. We're just making progress here. Okay, well, we'll discuss that in a minute. Um, this was something we were going to ask you about, Bob. Um, this is something that, that was put out there a while ago. Let me go back. And I think you already touched on it a bit tonight, didn't you? Right. Yeah, so um, I think the, the point I had made earlier, I, I do think that, you know, I'll, I'll look for some guidance from the committee on, on, um, on some of the policies. Um, some are, you know, um, some are, are probably not particularly relevant for the group, but, um, but the ones that are, I certainly uh, would look for some assistance from you guys. Okay. Maybe what I can do is is just you know take a look at what the things I'm working on and what what may be the most relevant and bring it back to the group and then um, we can decide if this if there's a, a, a team that wants to to work with me at, uh, on editing those it shouldn't it shouldn't be a lot of work but um, okay. so maybe maybe that's what we can do next. All right, uh, we just talked so this has come up a few times so and. This was one of the meetings, well, two meetings ago. Uh, Connor Doherty talked about it. He was part of the public comment. Uh, Jamil expressed an interest as well. Uh, we just touched on it a few times in the last 10 minutes. Um, so, I mean, this right now, I would just say, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, We'll prioritize, I think the, I don't even know if it's a committee, if it's a council, whatever the cultural uh, construct is, a cultural council um, that exists in situate, and we will prioritize that and add them to our next list of departments. Is that a fair approach? I think that works well, because I think that puts it within our framework of what we've been doing. And we did not really have them in that framework and I think this does bring to mind that, you know, one of the future agenda items will be where do we go next um, with our, our meetings with people? We, we need to start thinking, which we kind of didn't really finish up on, but, um, you know, are we going to come with recommendations of September or uh, maybe even October? We need to wrap up our first round so we can think of our second round, but we can start thinking of, you know, where will we go next even before we finish the first? Uh, but we need to kind of have a, start thinking about making a plan. Right. I don't disagree. All right. And so this was, this was a healthy discussion um, in the last meeting um, around Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, I learned a lot uh, trying to understand, frankly, um, the difference between you know, federal holidays and state holidays and local municipalities and all this type of stuff. So I'm not sure what what runway we have here, what we can do. I'd, is, I'd like to take this again. This is something I've discussed a couple of times and I have not followed it through and to find out what can one do. It's uh, sounded from Joan Moschino that there are possibilities of having the select board 
support things about Indigenous People Day. Um, I have people that I can talk with, but unfortunately, again, summer has been hard to be able to get reach people. Everybody's kind of on vacation or um, not as available, um, but that is something I would like to follow up with to then develop a plan of what would that look like to then put forward to the committee to see if that's something they would like to support or not. So should we leave it as an opportunity for now, do a little more due diligence and then or should they move to end flight right now? What are your thoughts? So with that resounding silence, why don't you leave it in? <laughs> in opportunities and then- We let thought me... it was directed at you, Ruth, so. Yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yep. uh, but then let me, you know, see what I can see do. As long as you guys don't mind me going forward with it, um, I'll come back with some information uh, once I get that, and then you can see if you want to go forward with it. Yeah, that'd be great. What I thought was interesting though, is what, you know, the state is proposing. Right. Isn't really what I we think a lot propose. of people well, that's, are looking that's for. What, <laughs> come up with some options of what 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 would we like and also to clarify i want to clarify with the school committee what did they propose and what is their structure right. behind that I, I just kind of tie things in a little better so i i don't i ended up with more questions than i knew i had before we had this discussion so obviously a lot more work needs to be done okay all right good all right, so I'm not going to go through, we'll go to in-flight projects. I, I'm not gonna go through the archived or closed projects. Um, I would say look through them at your leisure. If, if there's any issues, I don't think there will be, but if there are, let me know. All right, in-flight projects. Um, and yes, we do have the sister city. So. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so these are the six that I have. Well, there, there were five, and then we're going to develop out project number six. Okay. So these these other five, and I'll explain number twelve in a minute because I don't think I that was post. I forget when I put it in here, but I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so gender neutral bathrooms in town buildings. So I'm not really can, asking for a stat. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, no, can we put that on the next agenda? Because um, Bob's done a lot of work. I've created a spreadsheet that I want to share with Kate. I looked at a couple of different sign options. So Kate and I and Bob probably need to get together. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to put some pressure on myself to, uh, if I know it's on the next meeting, I'm I know I will get it done. It's just sort of the way I work with all the things that come before me. Um, so if that's good with Kate and Bob, we can set some time just to kind of go through. I have the spreadsheet almost completed. It'll be done tonight, so I can send it over to her. Um, awesome. Because I do know that you know some of our facilities do want to make a decision and something that I'm seeing is our signage is very inconsistent. So I'd love to pass some of that by Kate and Bob and see how we can get some consistent signage around town, you know, choose something to recommend uh, to the facilities department, but also share it with you and get your input too. So would love to put that on the next meeting if we can. Great. I was going to say the same that I feel remiss in sending out an email to sort of, I know that you've done a lot of legwork on this already. So figuring out a time for the three of us to connect and then, and then talk about next steps. Um, I'll start a I'll start an email as well, just around scheduling. Maybe we can get something on the books for next week, just for a quick Zoom call, and and touch base. Okay, that sounds great. And trust uh -huh. me, Bob's Bob's done the the yeoman's work on this as always. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Great. Okay, um, sister city. So, uh, Angela and I. Uh, well, I shouldn't say Angela and I, a Angela, Ruth and I spoke about this in our last meeting. Um, I'm certainly intrigued by it. I mean, Angela, I think was the one who initially brought it up. Um, this is something that we want to pursue. 
Yeah, I had a question, Mara. I noticed that um, some of the um, sister city programs that exist now are starting up again with meetings in um, the um, sister city, um, West Cork has a meeting, um, I think tomorrow, and um, they have a select board member. Is that, um, does that, do both the sister cities um, programs have some? I think there's the just one that, I, I don't know, I'd have to look at it, Angela. I think the best route to go for you is to, the people that do all the legwork there are Brenda O'Connor for the Cork, West Cork one, and she can tell you how she got that up and running, as well as um, Patrick Hart for the, um, what, what is it called? The, the France. The, um, yeah, this is the French one. And of course, um, Susie Embry. Yeah, yeah, Susie Embry. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, had, I had an email from her, but it's an old email because my email bounced back. I can get you their contact information if you'd like. I, I think that's going to be your best bet. Um, in order to figure out how to get this up and running. And then also um, to meet, you know, probably with Jim Boudreau. And I'm happy to join you as well. I'm not sure the other liaisons will be able to help you with the process. Um, so I think you have a lot more success going right to those other committee member chairs. They do so much work on their own. Yeah. It's a very independent process. No, um, I spoke to a lot of people over the, you know, um, when, uh, heritage days because everyone was in town. So I was able to recruit some folks that are very interested in Good. joining the committee. So um, I think we just, um, you know, need to understand the process and our next steps. And, you know, I think, you know, I think it'll be fun. And I'm excited to, you know, see how we can make this Do you happen. have a liaison already in Cape Bird to work with? Because I, that's probably where you want to start as well. Right. Yeah. Once I understand what the process here, um, mm -hmm. then yes. Okay. We'll be, you know, because there's a couple of different towns. So, you know, most of us are from the island of Fogu, but, you know, I might have some competition with someone from Brava who might, might want to. Okay. Us to so well, there'll be a little competition to, to, to pick a town um, in Cabo Verde. And I just want to ask if we could um, put Cabo instead of Cape when um, we reference Cape Verde. Um, C-A-B-O? C-A-B-O. And V-E-R-D-E? -E? Yep. Okay. And did I pronounce it right? Is it Cabo Verde or is it Verde? It's Verde. Okay. <laughs> you can say Verde, but Cabo Verde. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. No, no, that's fine. It's I'm going to have to excuse myself. So excuse me for interrupting, um, but I'm sorry, I have to leave now. And uh, Cecilia is going to take over for my notes, and I will end up watching the videos. So thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. Have a great night, Bye. Ruth. Thanks, Ruth. OK, so yeah, so as far as the sister city, that's that's great, Angela. Um, uh, if you need anything, you know, reach out. You know, I'll you know, yeah, I'll reach out to the chairs on, and, and maybe I can invite them to one of our meetings. So if we have questions, they can, you know, explain um, how it works. I think it's interesting. Yeah, that would be fantastic. All right. Um, I forget if I discussed this um, project number 12, and I haven't done any legwork on it. Um, so you guys stop me if I already talked about this the origin of this, but um, so I'm involved with Situate basketball as well, although I'm kind of winding that down because all my kids are in high school or in college now, so the youth basketball journey for me is pretty much over. But anyways, um, we, we ran a, a tournament down at the, at the court, the outdoor courts at the high school. <clears throat> this was at the end of June, and it was right after school got out and there's a shed over there near the skate park and kids uh, basically are using it as graffiti, all right? And the graffiti was of a extreme racist nature um, and sexual nature. It was brutal to the point where I had to run, run back here and get uh, painter's tape and 
Sharpies and whatever else to cover it up. Um, luckily, we were there about an hour before the kids and the parents showed up, but it was it was pretty appalling. And you know, I'm sure it's it's just the first time I had noticed it. I'm not usually down there, right? So, um, so I just put this up here just as a I, I was. I don't know why I threw it straight to in-flight because I haven't really done anything. We haven't talked about it. So, um, but, and I, I don't know exactly how I would need to go about this. I, I'll, I'll not sure, I'll leave it for discussion here, but then I'll also, um, I'll inquire, uh, we can bring it up when we meet with uh, the police department. Um, that's probably my initial path here. So, because there's nothing like that exists now. And at the very least, it would be a deterrent. And I can't imagine that's the only place in town that uh, has something like this go on. So, all right. Uh, safe space norms in all situated town meetings. Are there any updates on this? We have a draft. <laughs> <laughs> um sorry go ahead more oh i say can we go back tom can we put that that security piece on when we talk to the public safety people is that might make yeah, yeah, sense yeah. to combine that yeah this number 12 here yes yes yeah. sorry yeah i was, just, I was, I was trying was to get to... myself off of mute <laughs> sorry uh so... mm -hmm. um no, I think the only update there is Angela and I had met um, to talk about some brief notes. Since then, I just pulled together a draft. Um, so once Angela reviews, we'll just share with this group, but I think it's in pretty good shape and we should have them done by the next meeting. You did a wonderful job, Celia. I think um, I don't have many com much comments on it, but um, I, I will get in touch with you so we can discuss it. Thanks. Excellent. And Kate, this next one, putting you on the spot with that mm -hmm. 700, 700 page document that you shared. Yeah, yeah, what, 215. So in full disclosure, I have not, I have not made future movement on this. So this is on my to-do list. Um, one of the things, so I did share this with Jamil Adams um, a little while ago when I shared it with the group as well. So he has that. You know, the report has different sections, so it has recommendation around homelessness and LGBT youth and governance, et cetera. So, you know, I can see if at a very high level there's any key takeaways that we want to look at, but it really looks, you know, at a number of dif different items. Um, so I'll have an update on our next meeting on that. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, and the last, so the last one here is the one that I already moved over. Okay, so I'm gonna, I won't do it now. I'll separate that into, you know, a bucket for uh, the three groups that we've initially prioritized. Okay, and it'll probably be fairly general right now, but at least we know that it's something that's in flight. It's something that we're working on, and hopefully, uh, some recommendations will come out of uh, each department. And it's fair to say something will. So I'm confident of that. Um, that's it as far as uh, our review of the project plan and opportunities. And comments now, comments later, send me notes, uh, whatever. I'm open to it. Okay. If you think it's working, if you think we can use something else, I don't. I don't care, whatever. I whatever. like this for, I like reviewing it because I think it keeps us moving on our toes. So I think it's great. Thank you for putting okay. it together. Sure. Agreed. I like the format and I like to review it on a regular basis so we can see, see where we are. We will be, it's going to be in every agenda. So, all right, thank you. All right, uh, not much left. Uh, so, other business, does anyone have anything else that they want to bring up? Um, right. not, yeah. necess 
not necessarily, I don't know where this falls in, if it's other business, but I was actually, um, since the census um, results came out, just a flag that I was reading, there's um, a good globe piece that shows a map of the entire state and you can zero in on each town to see how the numbers went up or down um, by race and ethnicity. And so I zeroed in on Situ and I would just, you know, encourage folks to just take a peek because that obviously signifies trends um, and I noticed, for example, between the last census in 2010 and this one in 2020, uh, the number of black residents in situates went down, in situate went down. Um, but other populations, I think like the Latinx population went up slightly. So it was just interesting. And the same thing happened in Boston and some others is, um, you know, just trends. But I just found it fascinating. If folks wanted to take a look, I could share the link. Do you have the link? Yeah, I'll find it. Okay, that'd be awesome. That'd be great to read. Thank you. Yeah, I, I saw the re, I saw the results on Boston. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't. See, I didn't see any links. If you could share that, that'd be great. Thank you. Anything else that people want to bring up? I was just uh, wondering on the uh, town seal. Was there any uh, traction on that, or if that's uh, no longer a non-issue? Thanks for bringing that up. I mean, we so we've discussed that a few times. Um, you're keeping us on our toes. Um, I I don't have a status as to why that, where that stands. Does anyone? No, I mean, I think it's certainly been raised by some board members and by the town administrator that we need to take a look at it. So um, it's definitely a consideration that's that's come up. So yeah, maybe throw it on here. I'm gonna put it in there, Jim. Okay. I mean, uh, for me, it's not a it's not a, it's a non-issue, but I know there's uh, citizens that have concerns with it. And I was wondering if uh, any progress was made on it to, you know, uh, appease their concerns on the matter and steps taken to either, uh, you know, in a very, uh, how you say, um, in a way to honor the, the uh, natives that were here, either we reach out to their descendants or their next descendants on, on an, uh, a very appropriate way of how to remedy the situation. Got it. Because ultimately, I think they're the only people that can really give us any kind of like appropriate solution to the to the problem. I can't disagree. Yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for bringing that up. I I, I could have sworn that was documented somewhere at some point, and we got it. So thank you. You're welcome. All right. Anyone else? Other business? Okay. Uh, future meeting dates. I think these are fairly locked in at this point. Uh, September 14th, the 12th, the 9th, and the 14th. So. Um, yeah, I can't be at the 14th. I'm out of town. Um, just so maybe I'll just make sure I have everything ready for Kate and Bob to review the restroom okay. initiative. All right, thanks for letting me know. Anybody else just send me a note as we get closer if there's conflicts or what have you. Okay. All right, uh, fairly tidy. Uh, I would like to, you guys gotta help me out. Um, motion to adjourn the meeting. Aye. I, do I have a second? I'll second. All right, let's take the roll. Uh, Vice Chair Gray. Yes. Uh, Ms. Swope. Yes. Mr. Six Tiger. Yes. Ms. Risha. Yes. And I am also a yes. So it is 744 and the meeting is adjourned. Thanks everyone.